Hi, my name is Bhavish and in this video we are going to start with an official tutorial for CL programming. So stay tuned. So in one of the earlier videos, we did cover the basic syntax for the CL programming language. We discussed about the parameters, we discussed about variable declaration, assigning values to the variables. We also discussed about creating commands, creating a CL command and so on. So we did touch upon the basics of CL, but from today and from this video, we are going to deep dive into CL. So let's begin. The introduction to CL programming on IBM I is 400. So let us go through the article and let us try to learn and understand CL. I'm going to read the article and trying to I, I'm going to try to understand it myself and uh, I'm going to explain what I understand. So we will learn this together. Welcome to this comprehensive guide on CL programming, also called as CLP for CL programming. The command language programming used in IBM I, previously known as AS400. So CL is an essential part of the IBM I platform, acting as a bridge between users and the system's powerful features. Whether you're a beginner or have experience with IBM I, the guide will help you master the art of CL programming. So this is an introductory article, it looks like, and uh, what is CL programming? So this is just an introduction paragraph. Let's move ahead. What is CL programming? CL or control language is a scripting language designed to interact with the IBM I operating system. So I think CL is similar to your bash in Linux, bash shell scripting in Linux and the batch uh, Windows batch language that is there where you can use the operating system level commands. So CL is similar for AS400 where you can write the operating system level commands in the CL programming language and use it as a scripting language to perform tasks on IBM I operating system that is AS400. So CL is a scripting language uh, just like your Linux bash and Windows batch. It's commonly used to automate tasks Right, so same on the, in the same way on Linux, you use bash scripts to automate tasks. You also use Python to automate. And uh, on Windows, you can write batch scripts or your uh, Windows uh, PowerShell scripts or PowerShell commands or operating system commands, which are there, those commands we can write. Uh, we can also use it for control, for controlling the job flows, that is which job to execute manage system resources so if it is uh, let's say if it is 12 o'clock at midnight then you might want to start some jobs or if you want to manage system resources like hardware uh, set limits change limits with time and so on and execute system commands so basically it is a scripting language for executing system commands mastering cl helps you maximize the efficiency of an ibm I environment especially when dealing with batch processing, job scheduling, or system management tasks. All right, so CL would allow you to do administration level tasks and uh, it would help you with automation and uh, making things quicker and uh, automating your, basically automating your uh, manual tasks on the OS. So why should we learn CL? So is it only for the administrators? No, I don't think so. Uh, learn CL. Learning CL is crucial for several reasons. Efficient job control, automating and controlling jobs on IBM I with CL can simplify workflows. So we usually have the end of day jobs uh, on a core system, which is uh, running on NAS 400. So at the end of the day, all the finance jobs and all the uh, uh, transactions which have been done during the daytime, they are, uh, all the transactions are reviewed uh, the programs flow through the transactions. It would do some accounting and it will post the accounting reports and it will do a whole bunch of things at the end of the day. So it helps automating. CL helps in automating the jobs. Integration with RPG. Although I don't think it is only RPG, it can integrate with COBOL as well and uh, possibly any other language that uh, runs on AS400. 
So CL programs are often used in combination with RPG programs to handle system level tasks, making it a versatile skill for IBMI professionals. But yes, on AS400, as we saw in one of the videos before, that RPG is the one of the most used programming languages on uh, AS400. So here we are talking about CL programs used in combination with RPG to handle system level tasks and making it a versatile skill for IBMI professionals. System administration, CL scripts allow for task automation, as we saw before, monitoring. So if, for example, if the resources are uh, used more than your more than your limits, it can trigger some messages or it can execute some other jobs, it can send your mail to the mail server that is installed in AS400 or SMS or anything like that for a notification service. So it can monitor resource management it can do and uh, making system administration much smoother. Right, so it allows better system administration. Legacy code maintenance. Many businesses still use CL code. Understanding it helps maintain and modernize legacy systems. So before, during, and after a program, which is there, for example, in COBOL, uh, a, a legacy code might have a bunch of pre-processing, post-processing, or uh, it, a COBOL program or an RPG program might call a CL program in between to perform additional tasks. So it helps with that. Structure of this tutorial. So the tutorial begins, and uh, we have an index in front of us. This blog will walk you through everything from basic concepts to advanced techniques. Below is the detailed index that will guide you through the learning journey. You can refer back to this page anytime. So there is an index. So let us go through and let us do an overview of what all we are going to learn. And let us look at the index. Getting started with CL programming. Introduction to IBM I and CL. Uh, so it also introduces you to IBM I. Uh, CLP syntax and structure overview. Setting up your desktop environment, uh, development environment. I, although I don't think we require any specific development environment, a simple SEU is going to be fine. Creating your first CL program, although we have already created a CL program before, uh, but we'll still go through this, creating our first CL program. Uh, basic CL commands. So working with objects, uh, how can you create a CL program, running SQL, displaying messages, sending messages, and so on. Working with variables, declaring and initializing variables, using system-defined values, and manipulating variables in CL. We have already seen these things, but I guess we will uh, go through these in detail. Uh, although we have not seen uh, system-defined variables, we have only looked at basic variable, in variable initialization, where most of it was alphanumeric. I've never gone ahead and declared any numeric variables, although I might have in one of the tutorials. Manipulating variables in CL, we did assign value. Let's also try to understand what else we can do. Input output operations, reading and writing to data areas, file IO operations in CL, using data queues for inter-program communication. So yeah, all this is new for us. I have not uh, created a CL program before to do any of this. So this is going to be interesting. Control structures in CL, if, else, and do. So just like a proper programming language in CL, even though it is a scripting language, we can still uh, create uh, flow control. We can maintain flow control. We can have an if statement, else statement, if else loops we can have for loop, do loop, do while loop, and so on. Error handling, I think this is uh, similar to Java exception handling. Uh, where we can use mon message and then we can uh, catch messages so that the program does not abort but we can safely handle it and show an error on the screen. File handling in CL will talk about uh, handling database files so it is physical file and logical file so could be probably reading data with SQL I assume. Opening and closing files, reading records with receive file. So I think this is not SQL. This is uh, directly reading a physical file with the receive file. The receive file would be a command to start reading the file. Updating and writing records in CL. Okay. Uh, job and system control. So we can also use CL for submitting a job, submitting new jobs with SBM job. That will trigger a new job on the AS400 uh, system uh, and you can specify your own subsystem. You can specify in which subsystem it is going to run. You can specify the uh, level, the locking level of the job. 
you can specify a lot of parameters while submitting the job. So you can trigger SPM job from CL. Controlling jobs with work job and end job. So for the jobs which are already running, probably you can uh, work with them. You can control those jobs. You can abort those jobs in between if you want, or you can uh, do work job on it and execute whatever you need inside of the job. Scheduling jobs with work job schedule. I've never used this. I have no idea about this. Uh, we'll learn about this more. Working with job queues. Okay. So job queues are where you submit your jobs to. What can we do with CL and job queues? Uh, we'll have to see. Message handling in CL, sending and receiving messages in CL programs, handling system messages, using message queues for communication. I think we have already seen this before. Uh, using data queues for inter-program communication and using message queues for communication. So what is the difference between data queues and message queues? That also, I think, we will get to learn. Handling system messages and uh, sending and receiving messages in CL program. I think this is already covered before with send message and so on. But I guess this will be in more detail. Error handling and debugging, monitoring errors with mon message. We already talked about this. That is uh, exception handling. Debugging techniques for CL programs. We can debug the CL program also. We can take it into debug. We can watch the variable values and so on. STRDBG we can use to test and debug the CL program. We'll, run about, we'll learn about debugging CL programs, handling system errors, and program failures. Right, so this is exception handling. Subroutines and modularity. So creating subroutines in CL programs. So I think code reusability, this will help with. I will have to learn this along with you. Best practices for modular CL code using call and call SUBR to invoke procedures. I did not know that there are procedures and subroutines in CL. So this will be something new for me. Advanced techniques using APIs in CL program. So I think APIs does not mean REST APIs here. APIs would mean your uh, operating system level functionality uh, that is available in CL. Integrating CL with RPG and COBOL. So this is going to be quite important. Calling your CL program from an RPG program or from a, from a COBOL program. Using QShell commands in CL. Okay, I think this can be done by executing a QSH command. And then uh, in parameter, you can uh, execute your QShell command. But retrieving the output of that CL out of the QShell command and using that output is going to be interesting to learn. Handling complex file operations and data transfers. I think we're going to do advanced territory of CL. Working with system objects, object-oriented concepts in IBMI, creating, deleting, modifying objects, understanding libraries, files, and members. I think this is supposed to, you're supposed to understand this before you can even write a CL program. So this is quite late in the index, I feel. Uh, system security and CL. So basically libraries, files, and members, we have already created a video on uh, all this. If you want to watch the video, do check out the other videos on my channel. And if you do like these videos, kindly consider subscribing to the channel and do hit that subscribe button. Uh, next is system security and CL. So we are going to talk about working with user profiles and authorities, auditing system activities with CL, automating security related tasks. Yeah, so this is all advanced stuff. Performance optimization, improving performance of CL program, batch processing, parallel execution, memory and resource management in CL. Real world CL examples, automating backup and recovery processes. Okay managing system logs and reports, batch processing and financial data, system monitoring and altering with CL. Best practices and tips, coding standards for CL. Again, this is supposed to be at the initial stage of the index. This is too late, the index. Error handling and logging, performance tuning techniques, maintaining legacy CL code. Okay, so in the upcoming articles, we'll start by setting up a desktop, uh, sorry, development environment, learning the syntax and creating simple programs. And that's it, the article ends. All right, so that was the introduction for today. In the next video, we are going to continue with the first chapter that is getting started with CL programming and introduction to IBMI and CL. 
that was it thank you for watching if you do like these videos kindly consider subscribing to the channel bye bye